Uh, so years later, in 2015, after I finally left that degenerate hellhole of Vashon Island and the Puget Sound, um, <laughs> I ended up back with mom. And I wanted to believe that, you know, because I started realizing that I couldn't rely on family, society, or government to save me from my mental health, to even honestly admit that I have a mental health issue. It was a fight just to get a diagnosis, which is fucking insane to me. That Like, that's how corrupt our society is in every aspect. It's not just government that's corrupt. The people are corrupt. No, don't fucking extra. Oh, they're corrupt and not me. Yeah, no. It's society. It's people without government are also corrupt as fuck. And the government is corrupt as fuck. So here's another example. Um, anyway, I wanted to be wrong when I learned to isolate and identify contributing factors to maladaptive thoughts and behavior because that identified my family and people I trusted as friends as people who were actually harmful and destructive to me because what they said and what they did were not in alignment. Um, I wanted to be wrong that my mother would destroy my life like that and my father would and my brother would. I was right. But I applied the scientific method to eliminate any bias. I moved back with my mom. Um, I had an open wound on the amputation surface of my right foot that didn't close for two years. It was black on the inside. I was alcoholic at the time because Seattle's uh, environment is not positively reinforcing of sobriety. It's very much aggressively pushing drugs and alcohol on everyone and anyone indiscriminately. <sighs> Got sober when I moved back in with mom and went vegetarian and or vegan. And for going vegan, my foot actually closed. The wound closed for the first time in two years. But I went to four clinics in Seattle. They gave me opiates, based painkillers, and uh, antibiotics and sent me home. Finally, in New Mexico, I got an accurate diagnosis that it was Veruca squamous cell carcinoma. It was cancer. It was not metastatic, fortunately. But... They did an excision and a skin graft. And when this happened, um, they told me I got to stay off my foot and recover for seven weeks. My mom, being a schizo psycho bitch, came in and just literally <laughs> just bitched me out of the house on my amputated foot. And I even had the radian injected, so I still had an open wound that went all the way to the femoral artery in my right upper thigh that I hadn't healed from. And she kicked me out of the house, but he drove me out of the house being a psycho bitch on my feet. My, she knows I have amputated feet, and she still couldn't control herself. She's always been this way. And so I ended up in Taos. I'm in this place called the Mesa, which has no running water and electricity, which I never should have been in because all marijuana grow was there. But they were the only ones who took me in. Like, I couldn't go to my family and say, hey, I need a place to stay. My family's always been fucked up and been like, fuck you, buddy. Go homeless. We hate you. Straight up, that's they, the way they've always been. I, I would hope that I was wrong, but this proves me right. So, uh, the scientific method, right? <laughs> so, my mom finally drove out to Taos to visit me, and I told her, there's something clearly wrong with my head. There's something wrong with my thoughts. I'm going to check myself in to the mental hospital in New Mexico, which nearby was Las Vegas. And for years, that was the only mental hospital in the state. And my mom started crying. No, they're going to hold you on a cold steel table and inject needles in your arms without you, against your will. And because I finally started increasing my brain functions and studying psychology, I realized that she um, was holding back more than I had realized. She knew about the family history of schizophrenia and she was talking about her mother without saying it. So she gave me, she didn't have a poker face. She gave me way more than she realized. And I realized that she had lied, willingly destroyed my life. Like had she just been honest and been like, your grandma was a schizophrenic, runs in the family. Okay. Number one, don't smoke marijuana. Like a real good parent who actually cared and loved their children would not let marijuana smoke around them, let alone let the older brother force weed on the younger brother when he's 10 years old with a family history of schizophrenia because marijuana activates and exacerbates schizophrenia. So more corruption, psychological corruption, cultural corruption, moral corruption, whatever you want to call it. 
So, yeah, when <laughs> people tell me life is harder in Russia, I'm like, I think I can make it in Russia. Things have been really fucked up for me my whole life here. It hasn't been a cakewalk. Um, but, so, once I realized my mother was lying, I went behind her back and filed a personal representative request order and gained access to my deceased grandmother's medical records, which um, they destroyed after 10 years, so they were destroyed in 1985. But they still had her identification card on file, and that had dates of stay and diagnosis. Um, paranoid schizophrenia both times, 1962, 1974. Uh, I think the first one was voluntary admittance, and the second one was emergency order. So my mom literally destroyed my life. Just, And that's why she doesn't talk to me today, because I figured out she was lying. I went through the court. And instead of being like, you know what, Mejito, you're right. I destroyed your life by lying to you. I should have told you. Then you could still have your left hand, parts of your feet. You could have gotten a career. We could have taken advantage of those grants into private school. But I just chose to destroy your life. Like, she did. I still remember it all. Much like I remember the adipose tissue, <laughs> which saved my foot. Um, so, after that, I still couldn't get a diagnosis. I had to fight even more but I, I that was really quick after that once i got the proof of family history of schizophrenia i posted it on facebook because i used to say on facebook there's clearly something wrong with my head i have mental illness and all my white liberal friends and family members who i've met in real life because they're shitty family we don't spend a lot of time together they would all comment like no there's nothing wrong with you you're electrocuting yourself with just stupid that wasn't a sign of mental illness so i posted this proof of the family history of mental illness and they all stop commenting. They just disappeared like cockroaches when you turn the light on. All these people I trusted, when it became revealed, they were stabbing me in the back. Vanished. Fair fuck. Friends and family my ass, right? Even my aunt. My aunt was uh, trying to bully me through text message. And, and she's a liberal, which is even more insane to me because you think she would help the disabled and the poor. Hmm. But she, uh, she's like, why don't you show me these alleged documents that prove the grandma Gloria was schizophrenic? Where did you hear that? And I texted it to her. And I told her before I texted her, I'm like, well, are you sure? Because after this, you, uh, you can no longer lie to me anymore because I'll know that you're lying. Once, once I send this text message, then you will know that I know that you're full of shit. And she said, yeah, do it. So I sent him, I sent her those uh, same pictures, the, you know, ID card and the governor's signature and judge's, uh, you know, stamp and all that stuff. And instead of responding, oh, you were right. We lied to you. We're sorry. She's like, I'm going to get you cut off disability because you are not power of attorney and all this bullshit. So, yeah, <laughs> my family as well as the people I once thought were friends. Family, society, and government will do in the next video, but all contributing factors to maladaptive thoughts and behavior like that is such insane corruption.